Hello, and welcome to this week's news break. I'm Imra Ahmed. And I'm Ains Dang. At colleges across the United States, encampment protests are making noise and police are responding. Late last night, University, Suffolk County, and state police descended on campus, making 29 arrests. Witnesses say the department announced it would not distinguish between press and protesters. There was no difference when it came to students studying or working on campus or on the grounds for club activities either. Witnesses say they even removed people from educational areas like labs and even the library. President of Stony Brook University, Mary McInnes, emailed today saying it supported each individual's right to free expression. Meanwhile, one female protester was tackled by four officers. Witnesses said authorities tried to discourage major and local news outlets. Ola Toen Capoli is on the scene with more information. I'm live here at Scholar Center where students were here protesting for the past two days before they were moved late last night by police. Stony Brook University is not the first campus to meet this fate, as Columbia's encampment was recently also destroyed. As a sense of solidarity for Palestine spreads across the country, college and university campuses have started encampments in support. On Tuesday morning, Stony Brook University joined that growing encampment list. encampment was inspired first by the movements that we're seeing across the United States right now. It started from Vanderbilt and then uh, Columbia. We also see one at, at uh, University of Michigan. We see some of the CUNY schools. In, uh, we, saw, we saw FIT recently as well. And we're, we're very inspired by what's going on there. As day turns to night, the protests remain at staller steps as the students prepare to stay the night. Something interesting about encampments is that they get bigger and better over time. Uh, today, I think, is the first night of the Sony Brook encampment. So it's the first night. We have a lot of people that have turned out, which is pretty cool. I want to say, like, Parsons encampment, the new school, started out with, like, seven people on the first night. So, you know, like, we're... We're all growing and we're all learning how to do this better and like the blueprints are coming out on how to do this better and we're organizing as a people on how to do this better. Unfortunately, Stony Brook's encampment didn't get the chance to grow. On Wednesday around 7 p.m., the student protesters got the notice to leave by 11 p.m. or they will be arrested. From that point, police presence started to grow as UPD State Police and Suffolk County Police gathered. Around 11.30, the police started clearing out inside of Staller Center before barricading students into the library. While students were barricaded, they started their arrests, detaining 29 students and faculty. <laughs> As of this morning, Staller Center has been cleared of all protesters. Your dance. As the war overseas continues, students here on campus are reminded of the importance of dialogue and empathy. Stay tuned for this development story as updates come in. Back to you in studio. UN courts are rejecting a call from Nicaragua to prevent Germany from supplying Israel with military aid. On Tuesday, the International Court of Justice said that it wasn't an emergency and there was not enough to issue the restriction. Germany claims that they have not supplied many weapons to Israel since the start of the conflict last October. They also asked the UN court to entirely dismiss the case, which, has, which was refused. Nicaragua says that Germany is breaching the 1948 Genocide Convention, an obligation the country entered after World War II. Israel itself is not involved in the case but responded by saying that they have not committed any acts of genocide in Gaza. Approximately 36,000 Palestinians have been killed since the original Hamas attacks. Those attacks resulted in about 1,200 Israeli deaths and over 240 hostages. Fearing its own possible day in court, Israel has been worried about the International court, Criminal Court as well. The ICC is responsible for prosecuting crimes occurring in countries who cannot or will not try them. Three years ago, the ICC started investigating alleged war crimes on Palestinian territory. Their search goes as far back as the 2014 Gaza War and could, not, and could put Israel, Israeli senior officials, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in jeopardy. Campus Life Centers is evicting numerous campus organizations from their club spaces. On April 12th, campus organizations such as the LGBT Alliance, Animated Perspectives, Smash It SBU, Science Fiction Forum, and the Commuter, Commuter Students Association were notified that they must vacate their club spaces in the SAC 
by May 15th with no explanation on the decision. This has sparked outrage and concern from the student body with over 1,000 signatures on a petition against the decision. Despite support from the undergraduate student government, Campus Life Centers declined to provide details, remaining tight-lipped about their, their reasoning de behind this, the decision while offering no solutions for storage or future accommodations. The LGBTQA club president Thorian Giannuzzi stated that the safety and accessibility needs of club members were disregarded by the, this decision, hindering club operations. Now introducing a segment in Port Jefferson, Aisha Diamande showcases the East and Shirt Company to show why supporting local business is crucial and important. Today we shine a spotlight in an establishment that's located in the heart of Port Jefferson. We're at East End Shirt Company. Join us as we explore this shop together. Located in Three Mill Creek Road, Port Jefferson, the East End Shirt Company has gained popularity for its classic yet modern designs, tailored fits, and attention to details. Established in 1979 in Port Jefferson, Long Island, this company offers clothing and accessories for the whole family infant through adult size 4x. Finding the ideal item for both you and your loved ones is guaranteed. I'm here because I was walking around here and I saw the shop and I was just like, it's giving, it's looking really my type and I like, I found like my clothes were here, like the type of clothes I like, so I came in to look around. And I found it really beautiful and I like the aesthetic and everything set around, the sweatshirts, and there's a mirror, like, I like it. Having worked for the company for over 43 years, the owner, Mary, enjoys organizing color schemes for the various seasons as much as selling merchandise. Her main goal is to develop connections with customers who frequent her store. We are a, um, a destination clothing store um, that features Long Island, Port Jefferson, and New York apparel, uh, knickknacks, keychains, mugs, hats, um, bags, an off, a, a nice variety of things that you could send, um, pick up, or gift to someone. Um, we're on uh, social media and uh, as well as, you know, Google. You Google East End Shirt Company or Long Island sweatshirts, um, Port Jefferson t-shirts, and it's going to come up and you'll be able to find us that way. Um, we are on Instagram, Facebook. Um, we do have a website. Um, we have a, um, an e-commerce site and that, um, that you can find us, see what we have. Most of our um, inventory or most of our, our um, yeah, inventory is on the website, not everything. So you really should come here to visit. I love the aesthetic here. They have a really comforting and inviting view. It's nice and snug, but not too tight. They also create personalized orders, so whenever you're in town, they would love to see you. Wow, it's clear that they're committed to excellence and passion. We should continue to support our local businesses. Back to you in studio. Thank you, Aisha. That was a great story. And thank you for watching our final broadcast, Stony Brook News Break. I'm Imra Ahmed. And I'm Ainstein.